In this video, we're going to start talking about the temperature dependence of entropy. So the first law says that any small change in energy, du, is going to equal the small amount of heat absorbed by the system, dq rev. Uh, this is if it's done in a reversible way for this rev subscript, plus any small amount of work that the system either does or is done on the system, uh, dw rev as well. And we know that entropy, ds, was equal to dq rev over t. So multiplying both sides by t there, we have that the reversible heat, the differential of it, is equal to t ds. So that's just multiplying our expression for entropy from the Clausius equation, uh, dq rev over t times t, dq rev equals t ds. And our expression for the differential of work, dw rev equals minus pressure times the differential in volume, so minus p dv. And both of these having the kind of Greek delta instead of the traditional d for differential because they are path functions, whereas energy and entropy volume, those are all state functions. Okay, so putting that together, we can get an expression for the differential in internal energy, du, is T D S minus P D V. So we're going to start seeing more and more expressions like these for things like uh, internal energy, entropy, enthalpy, and then later on Helmholtz and Gibbs energy. So pay attention to forms like these because these are going to start popping up a lot in a very short while. Okay, so in order to get the differential for entropy, we can divide we, well, we can add PDV to both sides and then divide by T for both sides. And that will give us the following equation for the differential of entropy. So DS will be DU over T plus P over T DV. I was just adding this to the other side and then dividing both sides by T. Okay, so if we want to write the total differential of u, if u is a function of s and v, then we can write the following expression, saying that u is a function of entropy and volume. So du is going to equal, or if u is a, sorry, if u is a function of temperature and volume, function of t and v, du is going to equal the partial derivative of u with respect to t at constant volume, the other variable, times dt, plus partial derivative of u with respect to v at constant temperature, the other variable there, times dv. So you learned from multivariable calculus, this is how you write the total differential for a multivariable function such as uh, du here being dependent on t and v. So if we do that and then substitute in this expression for du here up into our expression for entropy up here and then uh, carry around uh, a bunch of algebra to make that happen as well, we're going to end up with the following expression that ds equals 1 over t partial derivative of u with respect to t at constant volume differential of temperature dt plus 1 over t and then there are going to be two terms that pop up here that depend on dv one's going to come from du here and one's going to come from p so there's two terms going to be in there p plus partial derivative of u with respect to v at constant temperature times dv Okay, so from there, we know that the partial derivative of internal energy with respect to temperature at constant volume is the constant volume heat capacity. So CV is defined as du dt at constant V. Okay, so we can substitute that in to our expression there for entropy. So we're going to have ds equals cv dt, just substituting this in there, over t plus 
1 over t p plus du dv at constant t times dv. But now if we say that entropy is a function which depends on temperature and volume, we can write the total differential of entropy as well. So if we say we have S, which is a function of temperature and volume, we can write the total differential dS as partial derivative of entropy with respect to temperature at constant volume, dT, plus partial derivative of entropy with respect to volume at constant temperature, the other variable, times differential of volume. Okay, so if we compare these expressions here, we can find how entropy depends on temperature and how it depends on volume. So first of all, we see that for entropy, the only term that depends on t temperature here, dt, is this Cv over t. So comparing terms here that this partial derivative of s with respect to t is analogous to the Cv over t term here. So that means that our partial derivative of entropy with respect to temperature at constant volume is going to be equal to the constant volume heat capacity over the temperature. And then similarly, we'll write it down as well, all of these terms here inside this uh, parentheses there are analogous to the multiplication here of this derivative with respect to volume. So these terms all have to be equal to this value here. So those correspond to the partial derivative of entropy with respect to volume at constant temperature. That is going to be equal to 1 over temperature times pressure plus partial derivative of internal energy with respect to volume at constant temperature. Okay, so those are two results there, but the really interesting one for us is going to be this top one here. This gives us a way to figure out what the entropy is going to be at another temperature if we have it at a given temperature. So, we know that entropy is a state function, so we have delta S is just going to be S of T2 minus S of T1 if you're going from T1 to T2. So the difference in entropy is just the entropy at the higher temperature minus the entropy at the lower temperature, or vice versa. That's if you're heating it, if you were cooling it, that would be the reverse. So we have um, this little expression here that the partial derivative with respect to temperature equals Cv over T. So we can then write the following integral for the temperature dependence of the entropy there going to be delta S is going to be the integral from T1 to T2, final to, in, or initial to final temperature, of the constant volume heat capacity over temperature, and that all integrated with respect to temperature. And that is, of course, at constant volume, so delta V would have to be zero during that process, constant during that process. Okay, so if we know the constant volume heat capacity at all temperatures, then we know at if we have the entropy at any given temperature, that we can find the entropy at another temperature. So this is gonna be really useful to us for finding the entropies of substances at a given temperature when we look into that.